Kimmy K2 runs pretty dang well in all the AI coding assistants that I've had a chance to test. Look here in Rue code, no tool call failures. If this was any of the other models that are kind of open source, open weight, Quinn, for example, you would see some failures on these and it would have to start iterating to retry. The code quality is good, the price is cheap, and it's open weight with a modified MIT license. So let's get into some of the more details on this thing. So here is one that I did. This is one of the harder projects that I actually like to test. And typically this is one that I do with back and forth. So you can't expect, you know, something this complex to happen all the way to the end, fully one shot. So I don't give it specific information. This is not an eval that's being ran, but I wanted to get a feeling for how it looks, how it feels. And honestly, this looks really nice, very clean, very modern. We've got dashboard functionality that it ended up having in here where you can actually see like your calendar and be able to see upcoming meetings. So you see here, I have a meeting today at 2.30 p.m. apparently. I can share my link, which, you know, isn't going to work because I don't have it hosted anywhere. This is all built with Next.js. So let's go back here. If I actually wanted to book a meeting, uh, this is what the book a meeting screen actually looks like. If you can actually share your personal link, super smooth, super nice. Now, this is what Cloud Code with Sonnet did. To be very clear, I actually built this one with Open Code. So Cloud for Sonnet, I specifically set that model. I can create an account. I thought that was a very nice touch. This is also very clean, very nice. Allows me to set my hours like the other one. I can set my event types, which I actually thought was kind of a nice little addition. Uh, Cause if I go to the dashboard here, I can actually do the same. So I can say, you know, I've got a 30 minute meeting. I can create a new one. I can set custom colors to it. I can set my availability, which I thought was really nice. And I can see my, my scheduled meetings that are coming. So here I've got my bookings, which would be my scheduled meetings. I've got my event types, I got my availability. So I'll go ahead and add like one of these. This is using SQL Lite behind the scenes. All just working really well. Now the Claude version of this actually did take a bit more back and forth to get it fully functional. It is a slightly more complex implementation. It has both a back end and a front end server that needs to be run independently. We're the one that we actually built with open code and Kimmy K2. Actually, just using Next.js, but both look phenomenal. Kind of, I basically had to give it three different things for it to iterate back on, and it's functional. I've tested it, you know, as much as I would actually test it, but really wanted to just get an idea of the style. This looks great. Honestly, if you were to show me this and tell me that Claude created it, I would believe you. This feels very Claude-like, so much so that even like this stuff here, it's very much things that I see Claude do a lot. So very fascinating, but very high quality. Let me show you something else here that I've been working on. So let's start with Claude Force on it. This is my pool game. I'll put the prompt up here in a second. So here I've got my power bar. It looks like I can actually drag the line. I actually kind of like that a lot. Um, terrible physics. Claude, for some reason, always does a bad job at physics. It's just been the thing that like literally every time I run this with Claude, Claude 4 and Claude Opus, you end up with this weird like sticky physics. So we're gonna close that one out. Let's take a look now at Grok 4. So Grok 4 is actually looks really good. Uh, do I have a power meter at all? I don't know. Um, so I'm not sure I can even actually click. Oh, I have to hold the space button. And oh, then that one crashed. Okay, so Grok 4 crashes. Let's take a look at DeepSeek V3. So Deep3, DeepSeek V3, it looks like I can set my power meter in the top right. Let's see, oh, I did the backwards thing again. Physics seemed like it's actually gonna work. Uh, so this is the stick. Physics not bad at all. Now let's take a look at what Kimmy K2 came up with. This is the Kimmy K2 one. They actually do indicate a little bit difference between the stripes and the solids. The layout of the balls is great here. I'm gonna assume that this is the aim direction. I never know. Okay, I got it right. Physics, phenomenal. Really, really good. And it didn't add the numbers to it like uh, DeepSeek V3 did, but very, very comparable. And I would honestly say, uh, let me see if I can actually knock something in. So it switched to player two. Did this one actually switch turns? Let me see here. So I'm still player one now. Let's see, does it actually change turns? It does actually change turns, cool. 
So that actually works. So to talk a little about Kimi K2 as an agentic coder, there's been a lot of people that's already done a lot of coverage over what the model is and all that stuff. Great videos on that. So I would recommend checking those out. This is going to be really focused on the coding use case here. A few things that I think are tricky. Uh, the 131K context window is a bit limiting. So that is something to keep in mind. But that hopefully is something that maybe can be improved in the future in later versions of like Kimi K3 or something like that. 131 is manageable, but it is not going to be comfortably manageable. The output price at $2.50 and the input price when there is a cash hit is $0.15. Cents. The input price when there's a cash miss is $0.60. Cents. And I have found that I can just hammer this thing like crazy and barely pay anything, honestly. It's very, very cheap. So when I saw this pricing, immediately I thought about Gemini 2.5 Flash. So in my head I was thinking, if this can perform as well as Gemini 2.5 Flash at the same price, this model's a no-brainer to really come into the tool set for whatever you're using here. So the input price for Gemini 2.5 Flash is 30 cents, which is half the price of what Kimi K2 is, but it's got the same output price. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is that Gemini 2.5 Flash does, when it is thinking, when it's got the reasoning enabled, it actually is a lot more expensive. So Kimi K2 is not a reasoning model. The context caching price is cheaper also on Gemini 2.5 Flash. Just to kind of put that into perspective, Claude Sonnet 4 is $3 on the input, which is five times the price of Kimi K2, and $15 on the output, which is what, six times that of the price of Kimi K2? And the size of the model is astronomical. So I was looking at the different tensors that are there. They're 61. The last one actually is a little bit bigger than 17.1 gigabyte. So we're looking at like one terabyte to load this into memory. That is a massive, massive amount because ultimately you're going to need a giant cluster to actually serve this thing. And that is why what we end up running into is that the biggest issue with this model is that it's slow. And I'll talk more about that here in a minute. So you can see here on the model card, there are 61 layers. There are 384 experts, and there are eight selected experts per token, which if you think about that, is 32 billion times eight, which is 256 billion. And most of the problems that are going to come up today about this model are primarily this, API timeouts, slowness of tokens per second, et cetera, et cetera. So let's jump over to SST open code. Now, I tried a lot here. So originally, I started with OpenRouter. And OpenRouter originally had Novita and they had Paracel as the two major providers. I see now that they have just recently added Moonshot AI, probably within the last few minutes, because when I loaded this before, this was not here. And they have recently added Targon. One thing to keep in mind is we need to look at the precision level. I have not done testing on the FP8 versus the full precision, which I'm guessing is running FP16, but Paracel's kind of unusable. 66K context is not enough for actually coding. Moonshot AI, this 131, is about what you need at a minimum to actually be able to use these with these agentic coding tools. Novita AI, 131K, this one I actually used for a while, but I started getting some weird oddities with it. So I actually ended up moving direct to the Moonshot API specifically to be able to test as raw to like what they actually created as possible. But look at the tokens per second, 17, 13, incredibly painful. Now, what you end up seeing are things like this where you'll be running and everything's working great and things will just die. And I also see that when I'm running it in Jan AI, which by the way, Jan AI has done an update. It looks freaking awesome now. It's so much like cleaner. There's some weird stuff that I don't like though, where this is like Python, there's actually a lot of Python code in here. You just can't see it, but I can copy it to a clipboard. So here, I'll show you what I mean by this. Um, boom. So yeah, so there's code in there, but you can't actually see it. Just some odd stuff, but look down here, 16 tokens per second. 
And this one is direct on the Moonshot API. So here's a screenshot that I took of Open Router a little bit before taking the, making this video. And you can see here that Paracel still at 66, 12.94, more expensive. And there is no Moonshot API. So I actually had to go and sign up on their platform and create an account and put some money into there. I did actually get an extra $5 for boosting it. And I stuck like $20 in there. And I've come nowhere close to actually using it. Partially because I can't even burn that many tokens that fast because of the, the slowness of it and the API errors and timeouts that I end up getting. Now, overall though, I did actually test the Shoots version. I tested the open router version and I tested the moonshot version. The moonshot version seemed to be by far the most stable. And you can see here in this implementation, I was running on shoots and it ended up just stopping. So I'm assuming it's an API timeout and open code doesn't handle that that well. I'm not really sure, but basically I would consistently with shoots in any of the AI coding tools that I get would get faster speeds but it would just poop out on itself. So I don't know what to, how to actually handle that. So I ended up just abandoning shoots. Unfortunately, I did upload uh, a little bit of money to that one. It's like $10, so nothing substantial. So moving on to Claude Code, I really wanted to test what Kimi K2 did directly in Claude Code. There were a lot of people talking about it. A few things that I think are a problem with this uh, are the context window. I'm not sure Claude Code knows how to handle a smaller context window because after a while of running a long running job, it would typically just die with API errors. But the way you can actually do that, and I found this link and a few other people actually had kind of sent me information about this, so I appreciate that. You can basically export your, for me, I did my Moonshot API key and then I set my base uh, to api.moonshot.ai slash anthropic which was weird. I still don't understand the slash anthropic part, to be totally honest with you. Because if you go back to my open code uh, config here, you can see here that I'm using slash v1. So slash v1 or slash uh, API v1 or slash v1. So it's interesting that slash anthropic is actually a uh, endpoint there. But here's an example of what would happen about midway through without fail across my e -valve. And I tried this about eight times, and unfortunately I ended up giving up, but the code that it actually did generate was great. It followed, it created to the to-do list. It was updating them properly. Everything's working great until we hit this problem. I do not quite understand if this is really a timeout. Uh, maybe Cloud Code has some like internal configurations or settings where Moonshot API is just so slow because the number of tokens gets so high that the timeout actually gets hit or triggered. That's probably the most likely thing. I was thinking it could be the context window as well, but any number of those things just make it unfortunately impossible to test that um, currently. Now, Rue code with Kimi K2 also worked incredibly well. I showed you that at the beginning. And on an eval standpoint, it just takes so long to actually run them because of the tokens per second. As we get more faster providers, if we do by the end of this month, I'll include Kimi K2 as part of my monthly roundup that I'll do and see how they work across all of them. But I really need that to be a little bit faster. It's kind of painful to actually work right now. Now, how do the evals look? So typically we've got Claude Four Sonnet at the top of the list, but with open code, Kimi K2, I, that was the only one that I've been able to run my full set of evals on, 15,434. That puts it in line with Sonnet 4, and, and it's really just in the middle of the pack of Sonnet 4. It's, it's crazy to me that it's so good. If you look at open code with Sonnet 4, uh, it's really number 2, 16,874, where open code with Kimi K2 is just slightly less than that. But with some of the other AI coding assistants, I mean, it beats all of the, like the Gemini 2.5 ones. It beats the Grok 4 one. Uh, it beats Cursor with Grok 4. It's actually just an incredible, incredible model. So I am incredibly excited about this. And on top of that, what I would say is there are some new models like Death's Real Small 2507. This is a model also that is doing incredibly good for me that I have been testing. And I'll probably put out a video later if there's interest on this one as well. 
because this is the one that I can actually run locally. So I've been doing a bunch with that and getting pretty dang good results. So in closing, where I would say is Kimi K2 is just a blessing to have for all of us. We're very fortunate that we've had another resurgence in what I think coding is in the future, which is AI coding assistance. I don't think the future is copying and pasting code from an IDE to a web UI and then copying and pasting back and forth. I just do not think that makes sense. You know, it's like when you go gro grocery shopping and you have to go to the grocery store, you have to load your items into the cart, then you have to unload the items back to the register, and then you have to load them back into your cart. Then you have to take them to your truck, put them in the back of your truck, then you have to unload them from your truck, put them in your house. Coding should not be like that, and neither should grocery shopping. But coding for sure, you should work with your code where it exists. You should not be have to take it in and out. Now, there are always exceptions to that, and there are times that I'll actually use the web UI tools to actually review things or test things, but that is not how I actually want to work. So the fact that now we actually have an open weight model that really is open weight other than a slight modification to the MIT license that works incredibly well with agentic coding assistance is just amazing to me. So I also want to be able to run this through all of my evals, but I need it to be at least like 40 to 60 tokens per second, and I need the API to be a little bit more stable. Like shoots is close, but there's something happening there where it's just like dying. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. Hopefully that's something they can stabilize over time. And in fact, it'd be really neat if they get the shoots version into open router. So the only other thing that we have to compare to Kimi K2 as an open weight model is DeepSeek V3, DeepSeek R1. But DeepSeek V3 really changed everything for me. And the first few days that I had available to me where it didn't seem like anybody else knew about it, it seemed like it was just a few, a handful of us that were actually using DeepSeek V3. The API was fast. The model was dirt cheap. I was actually coding a crap ton with it. It worked incredibly well with agentic coding tools, but it still had decent number of tool failures. Kimi K2, on the other hand, is out the gate slow. And I think that's the only hindrance that it has behind it because I don't think I could actually use this as a daily coder until we get the speed up. And if the speed comes up and we can keep the quality of what it's doing high, honestly, I could see moving a lot of my just daily work over to Kimi K2 and doing it for probably relatively cheap. Um, I could actually have this just running, being my default model in open code, and I think I would be incredibly happy as long as I can get a stable API with a fast token per second. And that honestly might be what happens. So I'm going to monitor next week, see what kind of providers come out. I really do need a full 131K context window. I can't use the ones that are less than that, and I need it to be about triple the tokens per second on the ones that are you know, hosting the 131K now. Anyway, have you had a chance to try Kimi K2? I'm hyped about it, honestly. I Hopefully you could kind of tell in my voice I'm a bit too excited about this model. I think it's pretty dang sweet. So let me know in the comments below what you think of Kimi K2. Are you having the same problems I am with the slowness of it and the API errors? Again, I, that is not a model problem. That is an inference. That is a compute problem. And I don't want to blame any of that on the model. But as of right now, until we get that solved... Unfortunately, we can't use this as our, as our daily coder, but I'm hoping we can actually give this a run because if it gets to that speed, I literally will work on this for a week just to see the, the strength and the weaknesses of it. And I'll continue running the evals. They just take such a long time due to the speed. But I appreciate all of you. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And if you wouldn't mind considering liking and subscribing, I would totally appreciate it. Till next time, everyone. Peace.